Hi all, this is Alan with Bothell STEM Coach and today we are going to be looking at the 2018 AP Calculus AB free response questions and uh, we're looking at number 5 here. So I have this function here, f be defined as e to the x cosine x average rate of change of f on this interval. Okay, so I always kind of maybe start off with a little bit of a sketch to get an idea of what I think this function should look like if you, if you will. And so I know that uh, cosine looks like this over a 2 pi period. And then I know e to the x starts at uh, 1, e to the 0 is 1, and then it goes up like this. So the, the combination of the two is going to be kind of like, you know, I, I, I don't know, like it's, 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 it's going to be the product of those two curves together. So uh, when I want to do average rate of change, rate of change is always a, some kind of slope, okay? Uh, but it's because it's average, it's a secant line slope. So the slope I do for part A is I do f of pi minus f of 0 over pi minus 0. And that's equal to e to the pi cosine pi minus e to the 0 cosine 0 divided by pi. And that will give me uh, cosine of pi is negative 1, so that's negative e to the pi minus e to the 0 is 1, and cosine of 0 is also 1, so it's just minus 1 over pi, okay? For b, what is the slope of the tangent line at x equals 3 halves? So I need to compute the derivative. And I do product rule in this case because I'm doing one function of x times another function of x. So I'm going to do e to the x times the cosine of x, which is negative sine x, plus e to the x. The derivative of e to the x is just e to the x, cosine x. And I can factor out an e to the x and make this cosine x minus sine x. And so then I want to know what the slope is at, or the derivative is at uh, 3 pi over 2. So that's e to the 3 pi over 2 times cosine of 3 pi over 2 minus sine of 3 pi over 2. And from our unit circle, right, 3 pi over 2 is down here. Cosine is 0 and sine is negative 1. So all of this becomes positive 1, because sine is negative 1, but negative, negative 1 is positive 1. So it's equal to e 3 pi over 2. OK, for part c, find the absolute minimum value of f on the interval. OK, I have to, what I have to do is I have to find all the critical numbers, and I want to check the endpoints and the critical numbers to find all the, the absolute minimum value. And I just pick whichever one's the smallest. So the derivative is 0 is my critical numbers, and that's equal to e to the x cosine x minus sine x. Because uh, exponentials can never be zero, like the graph of exponential zero, only, the only way this can be zero is if this number is zero, or in other words, cosine x equals sine x. From our unit circle, that occurs at two points. Here, it's where the x coordinate and the y value are, are equal, and that equals, that, that happens at pi over four, and then plus pi, uh, 5 pi over 4. Okay, so now I want to create a table. Of all of these values. And I also want to include the endpoints. And I'm just going to pick which the smallest one is. When I plug in 0, I get e to the 0 cosine 0. e to the 0 is 1, cosine 0. So e to the 0 cosine 0, that's equal to 1. When I plug in pi over 4, I get e to the pi over 4 uh, root 2 over 2, because that's what cosine of pi over 4 is. For 5 pi over 4, I got e to the 5 pi over 4, and then the cosine of 5 pi over 4, the x value, is negative root 2 over 2. And then at 2 pi, it's e to the 2 pi cosine of 2 pi, which is just 1. So this is the only one here that's negative. So this negative root 2 over 2, e to the 5 pi over 4, is the minimum value. Because all of these are all positive values. This is positive, positive, 1 is positive, e to the 2 pi is positive. Okay. So d, let g be the differentiable function since that g of pi over 2 equals 0. The graph of g prime, the derivative of g is shown below. Find the value as a limit as pi. Uh, x goes to pi over 2, f of x over g if you get x and say if it doesn't exist. Okay, so first of all, what you usually want to do is just plug it in first. Um, 
g of pi over 2 is 0. And, oh, actually, um, and then f, what's at pi over 2, I also have 0. So the limit of x going to uh, pi over 2, f of x over g of x, when I plug in f of pi over 2 over g of pi over 2, what I get is 0 over 0. That's indeterminate form. So we use L'Hopital's rule, okay? So that means I can do x goes to pi over 2, f prime of x over g prime of x, because the function is differentiable. f prime, when I plugged in pi over 2, if I look at my derivative uh, here, when I plug in pi over 2, sorry, you guys can't see my uh, cursor very well. When I plug in uh, pi over 2, I get um, e to the pi over 2, cosine of pi over 2. So this becomes um, e to the pi over 2. Cosine of pi over 2 is 0, minus sine of pi over 2, which is 1. Okay, And then the derivative, when I plug, approach pi over 2 uh, for g prime, this is a graph of g prime. When I approach pi over 2, I approach 2, because from the left and the right approaches 2. So I get e to the pi over 2, negative over 2. OK, and that completes that one. Let's take a look at 5. Uh, negative e to the pi minus 1 over pi. That's what I got. Uh, e to the 3 pi over 2. That's what I got there. Uh, these are the critical numbers. They fill up the table, and it happens at 5 pi over 4. Uh, this is the same. Negative 1 over root 2 is the same as negative root 2 over 2, e to the 5 pi over 4. And then e, negative e to the pi over 2 over 2. Okay, cool. So we got all that right. Uh, hope you found that helpful. I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching the video, guys. Please leave a comment, like, or subscribe below to catch up more of the content. And see any links below. I offer free homework help on uh, Twitch and Discord. See you guys in the next video.